Pokemon Sun and Moon invite the players to the newest region yet, Alola, a tropical Hawaiian-themed paradise where we are taught Alola means hello and goodbye. Given that the games have been out for a few weeks, we've had enough time to get through most or all of the games. Welcome to the Rant Entertainment, and here's our review of Pokemon Sun and Moon. <laughs> yeah, so Pokemon Sun and Moon are kind of a celebration of the 20 years that Pokemon has been alive. They are supposed to bring us a lot of new things that we haven't seen yet, while feeding us that nostalgic feelings of the things that are prevalent in Pokemon. Yeah. We see that with particularly the Alolan forms of various first-generation Pokemon. In interviews, the producers or the programmers said that the reason that only the first, some of the first-generation Pokemon got Alolan forms is basically for that nostalgic feeling for the games. Which to me, you know, that's to me that's one of the, you know, the one of the things that I could have done without. I would have preferred maybe newer Pokemon <laughs> as opposed to just getting, you know, rehashed versions of the older ones. So, I mean, here's where I have to disagree. Some of the some of the designs we can do without, um, okay. <laughs> like the Diglett, <laughs> or we can or we can even go to like things like the Sanctuary that was kind of weird. Sanctuary. Um, the Geodude. The Geodude is really odd. <laughs> the the class typing was interesting, and the reason why it's designed that way is interesting. But the actual design itself, yeah, a lot to be desired. I thought the fir- the the Meowth is great, Persian not so great, <laughs> but the Raichu, which is probably one of my favorite of just the designs in general, it's really interesting. Like okay. you said, it's a callback to the surfing Pikachu. Yeah, but they kind of brought that to Raichu, so now Raichu has. I'll a reason. give you. I'll give you that. I'll give you the <laughs> Alolan Raichu. I I liked it too. Yeah. I even like the Vulpix and the Ninetales, the Alolan forms. Just but... because of the type. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think that out of all of them, Raichu would be the best one. Yeah, I get that. I, I get that That a lot of the designs, they feel kind of lazy. Like, yeah. especially Geodude. Like, I cannot get over <laughs> that whole chain. It's kind of like a train wreck. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel, I think that a lot of this, after playing the whole thing, I mean, I, I got through the main story. I caught most of the newer Pokemon. Some of them mm. took forever ever to catch uh bruxish was really you know one of the ones that took a while oranguru which is the yeah the ape takes forever well at least for me it took me like three hours to find that thing um but i i think that feeling the feeling overall for me was that this game was a little bit too rushed hmm. um in terms of just the timeline that it took the programmers to have to get it out in time because it just like like you said, I would have liked to have a lot more newer, you know, designs for the Pokemon and even like maybe a little bit more crisp designs instead yeah, of just polish. Um yeah. But overall I had fun playing the game. I love Pokemon, so maybe it's just that <laughs> that bias of me loving Pokemon and it's one of the games that I've passed um in every single generation. You know, there's always there's always games that you have and you play and you never finish and I'm one of those gamers that, you know, like I start and I get halfway through the game and I get bored and I go on to the next one. Yeah. But Pokemon to me has been the one that I've been able to complete every single time. Yeah. It's weird because like you're, you're kind of saying how the rush feeling and I, I get that too, actually. Um, for me, it, it hits hard really with the way that they've developed the game in terms of its difficulty level mm-hmm. and really with its um story. Yeah. So the thing that hits me the most is the difficulty level. So, like, do you think that it got increased or do you think that it got decreased? Because to me, it was more like it was a lot simpler. It's simpler. <laughs> I mean, and and in some ways, it's it's good because like take the battle from interface. Mm-hmm. So now you can see that what it what each move does while you're in battle. You just click yeah. info and it kind of tells you about it, and then it also gives you this how effective the moves are. If you, I believe, if you used it once before yeah. against that Pokemon, that kind of remembers. Yeah, and I think that's really valuable. Um, Especially for me, who um, who's like an on again, off again fan. Yeah. There's so many moves that I just don't even know what they are, and exactly. like I think I was explaining how I was using this one move that all it does is change the Pokemon's um, typing from whatever it is to Grass type. Yeah. And I just kept using it, and I was like, why is it not doing anything? <laughs> and you know. Yeah. This kind of like gets it gets like new players or just players like me who aren't completely knowledgeable. It gives them a little bit of 
leeway and a little bit yeah. of like knowledge that <laughs> otherwise I would just yeah, be fumbling yeah. a little bit more because there's yeah. so many moves. Yeah. And but, there's so, yeah, there's so, there's so many, there's so many typings too. There's so many double typings. I thought when I first heard or saw that there was going to be that kind of hint of like, oh, this, this move is super effective against this Pokemon. I was like, well, why would they do that? I mean, I had, <laughs> there's been like 19 years of me figuring it out on my own. Why do all of a sudden I have to, you know, I have this thing, but it's helpful because there's so many double typed Pokemon that, you know, a move that would be effective to like a an electric Pokemon wouldn't work the same to like an electric grass Pokemon. Yeah. So I yeah, that's it. I yeah, it, it could be a good and bad thing depending on how big a fan you are. <laughs> You know, or new fans. I think that uh, that this game is geared a lot more toward newer it, fans, like it, younger. I, yeah, yeah. The nostalgia trip is there on some level, but by by and large, the more I play this game, the more I'm like, is this game really for me? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, red and blue are in there, so yeah. Maybe it is. For- <laughs> <laughs> just- but then to kind of like go back to the idea of um like the simplicity of it in Japan, uh, well, it's not really like how it is in America, but consider that. Yokai Watch is really popular. It's by far a lot more popular than Pokemon only in Japan. Yeah. Because it's a very Japanese game. And after playing through the first game, the first Yokai Watch, I haven't finished it because it's a boring game. No offense <laughs> to Yokai Watch fans. <laughs> but, but I didn't it, even get through the demo, so <laughs> But it's one of those games where I picked it up, I got somewhat far and I kinda let it let it go because it wasn't really holding my interest. But then when I'm playing through this game, a lot of things kind of ring bells and I'm like, oh, this is similar to Yokai Watch now. So one of the big ones for me was the Rodom decks. So <laughs> in Yokai Watch you have this ghost, like he's like literally like a Casper type figure and he gives you all this information and he really basically guides you through the game. Now Rodom in here is fused with the Pokedex and in he, a lot of ways he kind of acts the same way, like a guide type character who keeps you on track literally, both yeah. both by giving you tips throughout the game and also by telling you exactly where you need to go. <laughs> Which helped me because I do yeah. not like to wander in general. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that wandering aspect <laughs> a lot. I I think for me, you know, games games that are RPGs like um, Grand Theft Auto, where you can go and wander. <laughs> I mean, Pokemon, where you can just wander into everybody's houses <laughs> and just talk to anybody. See how they're stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that was the one of the things that I really liked, and and yes, you get lost a lot of the time, and you don't know where you are, but eventually you find your way. But Rodom Dex doesn't allow for you to get lost, even if you tried. It, no, yeah, it, it flags places for you. You know, it tells you exactly. You know, this is this is where we're meeting Lily, or this is where we're meeting. <laughs> you know how? how I think it's how. <laughs> Who I do not like, by the way. He is so optimistic. So. I, I got this feeling that um, that how is kind of like an Ash like analogous because he's super upbeat. He's not a good trainer. <laughs> <laughs> and usually your rival picks the Pokemon that's stronger to your starter, <laughs> and he just goes ahead and does the opposite. I'm like, why? Yeah, which, <laughs> why would you do this to yourself? I mean, it, it comes with the vibe of the Lola region, which is super laid back. Yeah, but at the same time, it it makes it so much more user friendly, and that kind of it takes away a little bit of the competitive edge, to be honest. Yeah, but yeah. it's good because then the next generation of Pokemon fans are there. Like yeah. we've just gotten them with this game. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think overall, though, I yeah, like I said, I I love this game. There's a lot of things to complain about, of course, <laughs> but there's also a lot of things to praise. Yeah. For me, one of those things was the Pokemon rides. Yes. I really liked <laughs> riding those Pokemon because the only Pokemon really that you've had up to this point was Lapras. Yeah. So riding on Lapras, you know, and not, and not even Lapras, like just going on, just surfing on <laughs> anything became a Lapras. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought it was really amazing. Because in, in a lot of ways, this game reminds me of, like, the Orange Island League. I just kind of compare yeah. it to that. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I've always liked about old Pokemon was riding Lapras. So to, to ride Lapras re- literally, and then also to be able to, like, speed up on Lapras yeah. was, like, a real treat. And then the removing the HMs to kind of replace them with this. Yeah. 
it was such a brilliant like stroke that I just I love it. Like yeah. I I like when I'm walking around, I sniff out for items. Like it's pretty, <laughs> I don't even like really explore yeah. as much as I just try to find yeah. hidden stardust. And it also it also eliminates that need for like kind of that one extra Pokemon that you just use for the HMs. <laughs> yeah. I thought that that was you know that's 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 actually pretty good because you don't have you know I don't want to say useless Pokemon because I don't <laughs> <laughs> You're I don't useless. really think yeah. <laughs> Once I go back into the box. <laughs> yeah. You don't you don't have that need to like have like a Rattata or something yeah. eradicate in your party just because it can no strength or rock smash or whatever. So that was I thought that was a good thing. Yeah. It it's definitely one of the things that I was I really appreciated and it kind of created this um concept where everything kind of makes more sense. Pokemon have uses. So to see that, oh, Tauros isn't just some random thing that Ash caught a lot of in Safari Zone. <laughs> 30 <laughs> to be exact. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but knowing that it actually serves a purpose and that these Pokemon, like, they kind of cohabitate, this, cohabitate? Co- <laughs> yeah, co- co-inhabit <laughs> this world, it makes it made me feel like the world was a lot more alive. And re- like it's those little tiny moves that really set the stage for Pokemon being a real living thing. Yeah. As opposed to kind of like the static video game where I'm forcing this Rattata to learn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I, I really do like the Tauros. It's, and it replaces the bike too. That's another yes. thing that we don't have any of. We don't have a bike. We don't have the roller skates. Blades, yeah. yeah, the rollerblades. Um, we still have running, but I mean, Toros takes care of the of the running for us. Yeah. Um, it's also if if you haven't already figured it out, Toros is also very useful for hatching eggs. Didn't know that. <laughs> it just runs around really fast. Does um, that double does the hatching rate? No, or but it allows you to just ride really fast. Uh, if you pair a Toros with a Magby or a Magmar or something that knows Flame Body. And you run around, it it lowers the amount of steps that you take. So, <laughs> oh, look at you! Um, and like to be completely like, um, even from a competitive angle, if you look at the removing the HMs, it makes it so then you have Pokemon where you can um, you can build as an actual move set that you'll like, and you don't need to to go to the move move forget guy yeah anymore. <laughs> the move deleter. Yeah, move deleter. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to have you know your your 100 level Lapras, no surf or waterfall. Yeah. You can teach it, you know, something useful like ice beam or hyper beam, even thunder, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah. And then another, another thing that we, that I thought was kind of in between for this game was just the removal of the gyms and yeah. the, you know, the use of kahunas and Island trials. So we no longer have that. Oh, the, here's eight gyms battle the eight gyms and then you go to the elite four yeah i mean it yeah they're they're very very new at the whole competitive thing there's no um elite four yeah at least at the beginning (laughs) (laughs) and you have you know you have kahunas and you have island trials and the island trials are more like mini games it's it's weird because when when you get into the island trials okay so one of the things I've never particularly liked about gyms is when you have to do all those little puzzles before you get to the, the gym leader. Those are the fun things. No. <laughs> I like murdering every single gym, like every single like person in the gym, and then I get to the, the, the leader and, and fight. I do not like sliding on ice. I do not like... <laughs> Falling through the ice. Yeah. Some of them more annoying, but I, I, so, I like it. In general, the island trials are interesting because then they kind of for- force you to po- pay attention. Yeah. You know, in a lot of other Pokemon games, I'm guilty of just clicking A and waiting for it to be over. In this game, I actually have been making an effort to read everything because not only do you have to do it in the island yeah. trials... You also have to figure out which Marowak is not the same. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> which I could not figure out. <laughs> it, it, towards the end, it gets a little easier, but... I think it's interesting that they find these new ways to kind of engage the player and challenge them to actually pay attention. It's like as if they realize that I have been pushing A my whole life and they're like, (laughs) find the Marowak. (laughs) What's different? I liked it. It wasn't, I mean, it's not, too big of a complaint i mean i've been used to battling eight gyms like for 19 <laughs> years but it's it's a breath of fresh air i think you know i can't i can't really complain about it it's it's something that's different i think that pokemon is definitely reevaluating what it means to make a pokemon game yeah and that part of it could be because of yokai watch <laughs> but the other part of it is because i think they realize that they have to have an in-between for these games, you have, you know, the older people, the Gen 1ers, you know, yeah. who are like... We're going to always say, oh, the first generation is the best. <laughs> yeah. No, Which, no. that's Voltorb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, to me, it's every every generation kind of builds upon the last 
ones. Um, and I think that this one really does a good job of building upon the last six generations that have come up. You know, you still don't have a Pokemon follow you around. Which... But- <laughs> that doesn't really you know that's not really important to me <laughs> <laughs> um you have the pokey pelago for that you know yeah. <laughs> and actually let's talk about some of these like interesting new like mini games i, I, I want to call them yeah which one is like your favorite well for me it's the beans and making the <laughs> well the pokey pelago um collecting the beans and then playing with the pokemon to <laughs> make it your friend Mostly yeah. because it adds to, you know, you get little kind of gifts by having, you know, Pokemon with a high friendship really? towards you. Yeah. I mean, you know, you get, they get double XP. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, sometimes they don't faint right away. You know, if they get, they, they hold on just because they love you. So I think, you know. And, oh, they get a critical hit sometimes. Yeah. They get critical hits. And I still wish that you could pet them after they make a Pokemon faint. But that's, you know, that's beside the point. (laughs) So, yeah, to me, it's that. Yeah, they really did build on, like, just the idea of Pokemon being, like, companions, not just things you constantly make faint. Um, (laughs) I've been having a struggle with getting my Magby to evolve because I keep making it faint. (laughs) But um, for me, my favorite um, Pokemon minigame, I I want to call it, is uh, Pokefinder. Yeah. So this game, like, it's a love letter to the, the old fans in a lot of ways. And I think this is my favorite letter. <laughs> it's Pokemon Snap all Pokemon over again. Snap. And, you know, you I, I've only found a couple of Pokemon that I can just actually take pictures of. But I really <laughs> don't mind, like, spending five minutes moving my 3DS all over <laughs> to get a really good picture of Growlithe. Like, it's 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 just yeah. dumb fun. I, yeah. Like there's some there's some parts of games where you just turn off your brain and you kind of just do something. Yeah. And although I said I don't like to explore, I do like to take pictures. So take- <laughs> and I like I like the little animation at the end when you when you <laughs> upload your picture. You yeah. Know, and you get like, but I mean I don't know who these people are. <laughs> I don't the know. Who keeps telling me my pictures are too bright. Like, can you stop? <laughs> yeah. Someone said that they 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 wish they were that butterfly that I took a picture of. <laughs> I wish I knew who all these friends were. And I yeah. knew, you know, I, I wish I knew where I got all these 4,000 likes from because it makes me feel really good. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, it's funny because they, they, they brought Pokemon to kind of a modern aesthetic. And I think that's that's important because you don't want to lose the, um, the younger people, the younger generation, by kind of keeping Pokemon in its, like, olden days. Uh, yeah. You know, like, I don't know how else to say it, really. <laughs> yeah, there has to be a little bit of progress. And in that progress, there's always... A different battle style as well yeah. i think that in this one well in this one particularly it's the battle royale which yeah. i thought you know that i've only done it a couple times but i'm like oh this is actually pretty cool if i have four friends <laughs> <laughs> you know we all have a battle royale i mean I, i'll try to knock them all out but <laughs> it's really in you know every yeah. man for himself in that type of battle <laughs> i tried it and i didn't like it but only just because of how um, hard it was. <laughs> I, my, I'm so used to just using my one Pokemon that when I try to use my um, Incineroar, it just fainted almost immediately. <laughs> like, because for some reason, everyone wanted to attack me. Yeah. and Because <laughs> you're probably the strongest one there. So, they <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of made me feel bad. It made me reevaluate my status as a trainer. But I... <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'll give it a shot yeah, yeah just you know take take after Ash you know just pick yourself back up and, and keep trying you know I You're think never how gonna... is Ash <laughs> uh, but yeah to me that the battle royale is, is a pretty cool cool thing we had inverse battles we've had triple battles double battles yeah you know it, it, there's so many different battle styles now that I'm just like I mean some of them I like I like double battles the, those are my favorite yeah there's rotation battle which uh, it's I don't know I, I <laughs> double, double battle actually reminds me to, about something else they include in this game that I actually don't like. So one of the things I initially was really fond of is when the wild Pokemon would call for help. Oh. And initially I was like, oh yeah, I get free, like just like a random EXP. I can just keep killing these Zubats and I just get Making like, oh. them faint. We don't kill Pokemon. <laughs> I kill Pokemon. <laughs> in, in, in the story, my character is murdering all these Pokemon. And for some so you reason, have the black, yeah. the black version yeah. of Pokemon Sun. But um, but the, the reason why I kind of like moved away from him really liking it is when I first caught my Magby. I ran into a Magby and I was super excited, and then it called for help, and then I I fainted the Magby that it summoned, 
then it called for help again. <laughs> and I literally fought this Magby for almost an hour. And I was so frustrated that all my Pokemon were at their last, like, they were running out of PP. I had almost nothing to heal anymore. And I had, I, I ran out of revives. And I didn't get to throw a Pokeball in, like, since the beginning. <laughs> That I almost just like quit the game. I almost just like <laughs> just turned it off, and that actually it frustrated me a bit. It never happened again, thank goodness. But I I don't particularly like that element so much anymore. Yeah, especially when I'm trying to capture something. <laughs> I think it was better when when there were hordes instead, hmm. um, because yeah, that does happen a lot. I mean, I'm over here trying to catch a Pokemon, and then it calls for help like seventy times, and I'm like, well. Do I just kill all of these? Do I make these Pokemon faints? <laughs> or do I, you know, do I keep going until something happens? That's why I like Zerkatry. I just put it to sleep. That's <laughs> that's that's what I lead off with. I put it to sleep. It has no chance of calling for help unless it wakes up after one turn, which is, that's annoying. If you don't put that Pokemon to sleep, it'll keep calling for help. But that's the only way to catch Marini. Hmm. You have to find a Corsola. And you have to have Corsola ask for help until Marini shows up. So wow. <laughs> if you're looking for Marini, that's how to find it. That's the only that's the only way to find Marini. Okay. So <laughs> I'll be never have one now. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade you one if you give me your Sol Galio. <laughs> Nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I think I would give this game an eight point five out of ten. Yeah. So far it's one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time, <laughs> despite all of its changes, and I, I would probably give it around eight ish. I need to finish the game before I think I form, finish forming that opinion, but right now it's really high, eight out of yeah. ten at least. Okay, easily. Yeah. So if you don't, if you haven't played Pokemon Sun and Moon, shame on you. <laughs> um, go get it. You know, it's it's out in stores everywhere. Only a couple bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Forty. Forty dollars. <laughs> um, and and have fun, you know. If you if you've played Pokemon at some point, this is a really good game to have. If you're tired of Pokemon Go, this is a really good <laughs> game to have. And let us know what you think. Do you agree with our opinions? Do you disagree? Um, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the Rant Twenty. That's two zero. And we're also on Facebook at Rant Entertainment. And click on that subscribe button to stay up to date on all our videos. And make sure to tune into the next episode of the Rant Entertainment.